Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of Where I Went Wrong. Well, this is a recap. Matter of fact, I do Where I Went Wrong. It is what it is. This is the Where I Went Wrong. So, um, yeah, that's the more interesting series title for now. The more catchy one and the one that people actually, who actually watched this, <laughs> like. Because the people that complain about this are, you know, make little comments about this. They really don't be viewing. Or they might just look at the title and then leave a comment when I actually watch the video. But, anywho, Where I Went Wrong, UFC 278. Usman versus Edwards, too. I went 7 4 and 1. The one draw was um, Woodson versus Saldana. But I'm really just going to focus on my L's here. And then, yeah, that's it. I'm just going to focus on the L's. Like, where I went wrong, that's the pole point series. Focus on the L's and how you could improve upon them in the future. But, um, yeah, so uh, I feel like all the L's outside of the last one were foreseeable. Like, definitely were foreseeable. Let's get into the first one. Altamirano or Altamirano versus a De Silva, and how's all? I mean, yeah, I picked De Silva here, my first L. I was really originally going with Altamirano, but I was like, hmm, let me try. Like, I tr like right now, my strategy is to tr at least try to pick, you know, one or two dogs. Try to. If I can't pick it, I'm just not gonna pick. I'm not gonna try to pick it. Like this prediction wise, I'm not gonna try to pick a dog just to pick a dog. I'm gonna pick a dog for a valid reason. So I'm trying to pick two dogs. If it's I can't really find a good enough valid reason or I feel confident enough in the favorite, and it's like no real need to try to force a dog out of a situation that doesn't need to force a dog out of. I mean, dogs always gonna win, but if I like you know just trying to chase dogs, gonna end up with like picking the wrong dog. Your dog get wrong, and you, a favorite gonna lose. Then you gonna have like an ugly record. That's you no. Know, I think all every time I had an ugly, like truly ugly record for a card is when I was trying to put too many dogs on a card or. Chasing the dog just to put a dog on the card is like giving any little bit of interest with enough reason to go off. But yeah, I'm drifting off. So first one is the Silva versus Alterano. I feel um yes, the Silva card it was questionable. Like even when you look at his record, like he never really is a guy that's known to go you no know, long. He was getting the fights out pretty quickly. He's a fast starter, and that's about it. Alterano still not impressed with his technique, still not impressed with him as a fighter. But one thing about him, like those fighters like that. They can go rounds. You can see he could weather storms. He could weather, and then he could um, you know, get strong as face. His pace can drown people. He's a pace pace type fighter. He could drown you with his pace, drown you with his work rate. And a guy like the Silva, who already like on two fight losing streak, and it's not really putting together just yet, or probably never gonna really put it together. And most likelihood, lead to the guy that's you know you can at least trust to get out of the first round. So unless it's either you gonna pick the Silva, you're not picking decision, which I did. So unless you really feel confident the Silva to get him out early. Then smart money should be on Altamirano, like to be able to weather that first round. And he, I mean, he did get him out the first round, but weather the early storm and be able to drown him late or just be able to outwork him and probably would have been the smarter decision. I got stoppage. I don't really see a stoppage for him, but he got it nonetheless. You know, endured, took him down, ground and pounded him, you know, which is relentless to the ref, pulled him off. So good work from Altamirano, but still not all too impressed, but he'll probably go much further. I'm not going to say he's going to go a whole lot further, but he'll definitely be to stick around, at least at the lower end, for a little bit of time. But, yeah, ain't going to talk too much more on that one. But it was that was a clear one. It was not clear, but, the, you know, the um, path was definitely ready. Either you, you're really going to, you, like I said, if you're going to choose him, you got to choose him with the confidence of a finish. Not pick um the silver in a decision. If you think a decision, you should just go off and run you can't guarantee or, you know, see some clear path to stoppage for the Silva, smart money, Altamirano. Ultimately, just in general, the smart money was Altamirano. Next L was um, Tybora versus Romanov. I picked Romanov, got the L there. In reality, this one, I felt like I wasn't too far off, but not acknowledging the obvious, the cardio of Romanov. I think I, think I did acknowledge the cardio of Romanov. I think I did. But if I didn't, then again, a, misle a misstep, just a small but important thing to add in there. But I, even all that being said, I feel like Ty Bora wasn't that amazing a striker. He didn't prove not to be that amazing a striker. It was just that Romanov was a first-round fighter for the most part, or he only had the cardio. Obviously, I saw that. Um, what I'm say obvious, I didn't say it. But let me just start saying obvious and just say it. Um, Romanov, well, Ty Bora had plenty of time shown to have good takedown defense. And I think it was even harder for her to hold him down. So it was impressive that Romanov was able to hold him down the whole first round, pretty much. But a lot of other people I've seen like were doomed, struggled to get him down, struggled to hold him down, and other people have struggled to take him down, hold him down. And he had like an 82-something taking down defense. 
then you're going up a guy that's got a one round cardio or two one and a half round cardio. And Tabor isn't no slouch in grappling himself either. But he all that been said, especially with those odds, it should have been a more consideration for Tabor given those odds. Given the fact that he had those takedown defense, going you know, he's been in there with a lot of good fighters, have went past, you know, went to three round fights, you know, been in these big fights and been deep rounds with good people, whereas Romanov has not really been tested. And then it's like largely one dimensional. Like Tybor should have been, especially it was like a plus four hundred or something, plus three fifty, some big odds. And it wasn't like that far fetched. But all that being said, like I said, in the future, gotta go to that. Cause I picked Aunt Lusa now I'm going to uh, one I won. Aunt Lusa versus AJ Fletcher. Cause I went with um Lusa because he did go rounds. Similar to you say Tybor. Tybor has went rounds. Tybor has solid take defense. Aunt Lusa went rounds. Been in with all these tough guys, never been stopped. And he has went rounds, and he has shown solid takedown. I think he had like 82, 83% takedown defense ratio. So you got in there with a guy like Fletcher, who's a, this fire, you know, this fire rocket come out of trying to get you out early. And actually, he kind of came out slow the first round. He didn't come out as fast as you came out. He was a little bit more conservative. Then the second round, he like he was down coming off the first round. Then he tried to turn it up. And then, uh, uh, but anyway, the same thing kind of came out. It didn't get the stoppage like I was predicting, but it did get it. Um, Lusa is a dog in there to be able to, like I said, take him out of the first round. And then just outwork him, which he did from the sprawl position mostly. And some a bit on the feet. But anyway, back to this one. Tabor versus Romanov. Yeah, given that, it should have been like some consideration more for Tabor. But it's not just that go more for the stats. But all that been said, what I was trying to get to, like I'm jumping back and forth, like I'm doing a semi-circle, full circle, whatever case. But um, yeah, what um, I was trying to say is I feel like Romanov could have still won that fight. Like, he just didn't give his old gas thing. Maybe he didn't want to gas out. Maybe he didn't want to get stopped. But Romanov, really, I mean, not Romanov, but Tabora really wasn't doing much in that third round, to be honest. It was just that Romanov was literally doing nothing. He was out there shaking his butt, doing a couple hundred tries, rushing to the clinch like twice. Why not go full out? Why not try to go for a leg, an ankle? Why not fully commit? I mean, you might get your back taken. You might lose completely, but you're literally just letting the fight coast away. Maybe he hoped that he got 10-8 and it would have been a draw, but... He literally was not doing nothing in that third round. Second round, he spent a lot of time on the bottom. He got, you know, in the, on the bottom. But third round, like, what was that third round? Just literally top board doing barely anything and Romanov doing that. Romanov was, I don't know, more active, more hungry, or taking more risks taking in that position. It easily could have been a fight. He could have made a victory for himself. And that's where I was kind of leaning. I feel like top board, like I said, top board striking ain't all that amazing. He's not a guy that's going to put it on him when he's tired to put him out of there. It's not like he got that greatest, greatest, um, um, output our greatest skill set our striking set of tools on the feet or the output with those tools to really put away a guy that's not a scrub to be honest well not I mean it's not a say scrub but a guy that's not there sitting for him but yeah nonetheless that was probably the biggest error for me on the card was Tybor and I felt like not Tybor yeah but um, Romanov and I feel like that was for a lot of people and just overlook, overlooking the obvious and kind of just leaning to that undefeated momentum of Romanov despite the clear red flags. And when you see clear red flags and you see that odd, like, why? The mistake is just why not throw something on that? I mean, sometimes it's like you just throwing stuff on it just because, but when it's actually substance to that toss, like that coin flip on that, well, not coin flip, but that little small, put a little bit of change on that, why not throw it for like, you guys might like plus 400, that's like, you quadrupling your money, whatever you put on that for the most part. But don't quote me on that. You kind of quadrupling your money. You put 100 on that, you went 400. Put 10 on that, you went 40. But, yeah. Well, you win 50. Well, get back 50, but you won. Don't, don't quote me on that again. But, <laughs> yeah. That was that one. That should have clear. So, that was my second L. Third L was Jose Aldo versus Rob Devalishvili. And like I said, Rob Devalishvili had um, amazing cardio, probably the most craziest cardio, cardio I've ever seen for wrestling. Like, that man will shoot 30 takedowns, literally. Some people say they shoot 30 takedowns like you did jokingly, but that man will literally shoot 30 takedowns to get three or something. But Otto, I think, shut down every single one of his takedowns. So Otto's takedown defense holding up. But it was just like the, um, his wrestling and clinching was doing enough to Make Aldo not do that. Like, he literally wasn't really doing much for anything. But by him doing that, it was preventing Aldo from doing something. So basically winning by 
preventing another guy from doing something. Like, not the most impressive fight, not the most impressive style, but a win's a win. And, like, it was definitely in there. Like, a three-round fight, which, you know, kind of could have favored out. Or maybe he could have let it loose a little bit more, took some risks a little bit more. Right? It's, you know, they'll caution out the win a bit with Barab. Like, I said Barab. <laughs> throw, like, throw caution out the win with Barab out there. But he really didn't take too many big risks out there. And Rob was just relentless with the clinching, relentless with the takedown attempts, whether he was getting them or not. He like, I'm just going to, I'm going to lock you up. And that's what he did. And that was foreseeable. It was an unforeseeable. You got Otto who, you know, kind of falls in that category. He already is a former champion. I mean, he's not getting knocked out. I mean, he has got knocked out. He got knocked out by Holloway like twice. Got knocked out um, Conor McGregor once and by Piotr Jan. But, you know, he's still an all-time great and definitely far up there, but we try and really decide a close fight, a close matchup like that. You got to feel that it could be a case where, and also it goes back to my other thing. Like if you don't see Aldo getting a finish in this case, you got to go to Marab, the guy that's going to you know, have the higher output, whether that involves punching or just work rate, like going for takedowns, going for t- clinches. And then, you know, obviously Marab has the higher output. He's the, well, the younger, fresher man. I don't think he's all that much. I think he's like 32. Aldo like 35, but Aldo's been fighting since he's been like two. So Aldo's got way more mileage on him. And then he, on top of that, he's probably like four years younger or three years younger. So um, that um, Marab is. So Marab is three years, two, three years younger and not nearly the amount of mileage that he has on him. And he's definitely, in a sense, more hungry than Aldo. I like what is Aldo doing to try to add to that legacy when Aldo's already, if not the best featherweight of all time, you know, people debate him with Vulcan Aussie now. He's like number two. You might say, oh, well, Holloway beat him twice, but Holloway don't got the resume of Jose Aldo. So in the historics and the length and all the accomplishments of Aldo. So Aldo still, without a doubt, better than, than Holloway, in my opinion, with the, the, the two wins. Yes, he beat you twice, but he ain't beat what you're, you accomplished. And just beating one person does not make you the GOAT. You got to go out there and beat other people as well to establish a GOAT. Just the same way he did. He didn't just go out there and beat one person. It's like, oh, I beat the former GOAT, now I'm the GOAT. I beat the former GOAT twice, now I'm the GOAT. Now nah, you got to do more than that. So, yeah, Aldo number one, in my opinion. But I know a lot of people now shifting to Vulcan Aussie, but like whatever the case may be, Aldo number three. So he already has that, like he's already established. Um, he was not really getting finishes at Bantamweight yet, or he don't have a finish at Bantamweight yet. So when you're not, when the finish is not really there and I, pred- I predicted decision, Aldo should have went with Rob. Like the higher work rate usually going to favor in decision type victories, unless it's real big damage. And I don't think Aldo has even really dropped no one at this. Well, I think he dropped fine a couple times. But outside that, no no stoppages. And outside, I think, uh, I mean, yeah, outside of Font, he hasn't dropped no one or really rocked anyone at um, Benway. He did, I didn't kick um, Piotr Jan's leg out, I think, once or twice in that fight. But yeah, no, outside of Font, no other drop. So a fight, you go into decision with a guy with higher work rate, should lean to the hungrier, higher work rate guy, and should have been um, Marab. So again, none of these ones were truly all that far fetched as far as the dogs that won, except the main event. Usman versus Leon Edwards. This one I know got a lot of people. I actually didn't put no money on Usman versus Edwards. Well, I, I'm just going to, since like the people that's viewing this are really the diehards for this channel or really the supporters for this channel, I will say where I got burned at. And I'm going to start posting my um, some of my bets. Well, not posting my bets on here, but you know, posting like prior shorts with my betting slips. And then for the people that, you know, subscribe, not subscribe, but pay for the Discord, well, not the Discord, but pay for the premium of the Discord, you know, to, to see my bets, well, my full bets. I already post some of my free bets on the Discord, but as far as um, premium bets, like, I'm going to be posting those, like, you know, probably with blared out, then for the people that pay, you know, they go in there, and I like, I already know what he's betting on. Y'all don't know, but he, but I know. I, I'm in his Discord. Like, I know what he's betting on. But I would say where I really got burnt, and I, I did get burnt. Card. Overall, good result, but as far as betting-wise, I got burnt this card. I got burnt. And biggest burn was the fact that Luke Rocco endured. Luke Rocco had not been to a decision fight. I mean, in a, in a, like he had not been to a decision since Strike Force. Thirty-seven years old, pushing thirty-eight, going in for a pressure, heavy-handed fighter like Costa. You know, coming off of two knockout losses, and I was like, it was seeming like a foregone, foregone, foregone conclusion that he's gonna get stopped this one. But man, like gritted out. It cost me some money. <laughs> he gritted it out. And I didn't even, I tried to even play it safe. I didn't go for um, first round. I went first round in that part level with Pedro, um, Tyson Pedro, and he capitalized on it. I thought that was the risky play a little bit, even despite um, Hunsucker getting knocked out every 
in the first round every time he loses and never really making out of the first round. I still thought that was a bit risky because you kind of don't all on one round. I didn't even do an under 1.5, so the straight up one round, first round. But he was able to capitalize on that first round TKO, capitalize on that. But I try to play safe with the cost versus Rocco, giving Rocco respect. And I say in the distance or KO TKO. So that gives me all three rounds, what, all 15 minutes for him to get that knockout. And he did not get that knockout. And that cost me, I'm not going to say cost me nothing crazy, but it did, it did hurt the pockets a little bit. And that's what hurt me. I mean, I said hurt me. It did hurt the pockets a little bit. And that, I did have that in a couple of different parlays. So, yeah, that's where, that's an L I took that I didn't even need y'all to tell y'all. But I'm going to start getting more into that, trying to um, post the slips on here. And then after, you know, after the fights, for the people that, you know, didn't pay this to the um, general subscribers and whatnot, and then I'll probably post the slips after. You can see how much I won, how much I lost, or whatever case for that card. But that's something I've been looking to get into. Haven't did it yet, haven't started yet, but I'm definitely eyeing to do that. And, you know, that's going to be a lot of interesting aspect to get in like. And, yeah, for you, me, everyone involved. But yeah, Edward versus um, Usman. I was thinking about firing on a 4.5, but I don't know. I, I didn't even think full fire. I was eyeing the two over 2.5 for this one, but I ultimately passed on doing it. And I, it would have cashed over 2.5, but, but I was just, you know, considering with parlay. But I just ultimately just passed on this card, on the main event in like in general. I know both guys went to decisions, but it just had an all feeling in a sense. And I guess the all feeling came up in the last minute. So good thing I didn't put no money on the main event. I had all feeling about it. I didn't know that Usman was going to come out there hungry and you know, get him out early or is Leon Edwards going to catch him with something, but apparently he caught him with something in the final minute. But yeah, like this type of thing, like you can't really, sometimes predictions, you really can't predict because, yes, Edwards, I know Edwards is good and very underrated, very solid fighter, but he hadn't finished no one. Then on top of that, the whole fight was pretty much over at that point. And then he lands the final, that kick that put in the fight, just like that. So, like, one kick, fight ends with a minute left to go. So, that's the crazy part. And it's like, when you really look at it, like, Usman, you know, overall had the advantage. Like, he could take him down, control him. I mean, Edwards just had that early on takedown and control. But outside of that, Usman was getting takedowns and getting in control and doing what he does up until that last minute. So, first round, look, you know, was rough. But outside of that, was looking like an Usman fight. Up until that fifth round, that last minute of the fifth round. So, when you look at that fight, what can you look back and say, "Oh, this I knew, I knew um, Leon Edwards was, was going to win." You had money on, you could be the know it all, or the know it all of know it all on that fight, and you would have been like, you know, already leaving the table if you had put your money on Edwards. Because anybody got like they knew it all in that one. That, there's no real lesson to be in that one. I mean, the lesson in that one, the lesson you always know is that anything can happen in a fight, and MMA is the most unpredictable sport in the world, in a sense. That's the most thing you can take from him. But as far as like, oh, I knew Edwards was going to do this. You know, Edwards had in his in his arsenal to, you know, land those kicks and stuff. And Usman has an issue tendency with dipping and stuff, low hands and, you know, some striking deficiencies or defensive deficiencies. But, again, that late in the fight, didn't really see it. So, yeah, that's really it. Like, I can't really take much from that fight right there between Usman versus Edwards. But the old, the old age-old saying with MMA is, any, what AJ was saying with fights in general, like anything could happen anytime, especially MMA when you could got submissions, you got flying knees, head kicks, punches. You're not just dealing with punches, you're dealing with fists, you're dealing with knees, you're dealing with elbows, you're dealing with shins, knees, you're dealing with all this stuff, you're dealing with toes. Somebody could dig their toe right into your sternum and then like knock the wind right out of your cells and you'd be out. Somebody could kick you with the, the, the um, you know, all points of the foot. You get kicked with a toe into the sternum, you get killed with like a flat part of your foot, you get front kicked. There's so many different places you could hit people with in MMA and all it takes is one thing land in the right place, right time, and fight could be over. So, unpredictable sport. But I'll, I think outside that last one, all were pretty predictable. But nonetheless, went seven, four, and one, or seven of uh, what? Well, I think it was twelve. But I'm really gonna cut it seven of eleven. Well, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, seven of eleven, or you could say seven of twelve. I really would say eleven because I don't really count draws in any way. I could go more on about that draw right there, but. Eh, I don't feel like talking about it. One with a draw. There's some little less to be learned in that one. I guess the biggest one, I'm going to say one little thing with Saldana dropped the ball twice. He had a man finish and he allowed him to stay in the fight and then ain't doing nothing with it. So it is what it is. I'm just not impressed with what I got in that fight. So I don't really need to talk about that one. I picked um, Woodson. So I'm glad that Saldana dropped the ball there and it just ended up being a draw, but that could easily have been an L. 
But the fact is, draw. I'm just gonna pass it on for like talking about that one. Maybe in a future fight they have a rematch or something. They try to run it back. I'll do a prediction for that one, and now I'll say my thoughts on the first one. But I ain't really trying to make this video right here too long. And that's the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for more videos. Peace.